This I hear from you for the first time. I can tell you it's on, based on my reporting. It's true. I mean, you know that it, it is a fact they didn't attend the meeting. This is something... What they have announced officially is that they have said that our Minister of Foreign Affairs is ill. More with President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. I quote the Quran to him to show him that he might be wrong about something. President Ahmadinejad has a history of making broad historical comments about Iran, U.S. foreign policy, Israel, and much else. So I talked to him about the history of the Jews. Listen to what he said. You're a student of history, um, and you said something that I was struck by in one of the uh, gatherings that, uh, that you were at. You spoke about Israel, and you said it has no roots in history in the region. And I was wondering whether you really believe that, because as you know, of course, Jews have lived there for thousands of years. And we know this, of course, because there are repeated references to the children of Israel in the Quran. There are 43 references to the children of Israel. In fact, one of them, chapter 17, surah 104, says, we say it unto the children of Israel, dwell in this land, live in this land, referring to the land that is now uh, Israel. So do you dispute these facts or, or do you accept that there is some connection between the children of Israel and this land? So we're trying to uh, fabricate, to make the roots a connection? So you do not see, draw any distinction between the Zionists and the Jews? I'm asking you. I'm, I'm, uh, I am... I have always maintained that the Zionist regime has no historical roots in the region. I, I, why would I say that, that the Jews have no uh, historical root? They were also in Iran, a great many of them. So that means that Iran belongs to the Jews. Iran belongs to Iranians, whether they're Jews, whether they're Muslims or Christians. Please pay close attention here, sir. Uh, the borderline is quite thin. Uh, Zionism is a doctrine, is a school of thought, is an aggressive school of thought, has nothing to do with the Jewish people. Ooh. At the same time, the majority of those who are there now have come from other lands. They're immigrants. Many of them recently converted to Judaism. So, the way this regime took shape doesn't matter. Yes, for a long time, Jews, Christians, and Muslims lived in Palestine with one another in peace and stability, and they will continue to do so in the future. It is not a Jewish-Christian-Muslim fight. We're speaking of a group of Zionists whom came and gained the reigns of power. Mr. President, let me ask this uh in a different way than many people have asked you. It relates to the comments that you have made about Israel in the past. I want to ask you if you recognize uh, why people get so nervous by your comments about Israel. Because you're the president of a country. And presidents of, of countries do not speak like this. They do not speak about the elimination of another member state of the United Nations. They don't speak about wiping it off the map. And when you take that rhetoric and you add to it the fact that Iran is developing a nuclear program, it makes many people in the United States, outside the United States, worry that the intention of Iran is to use that nuclear capacity to eliminate Israel to wipe it off the map. So really the people of the United States uh, are concerned? They are shaking? Uh, where do you, what do you base this on? The rest of the nations are worried, preoccupied and trembling at this thought? Uh, what for? We are friends with all nations. 
Uh, yourself, as a reporter, you must know, as a member of the media, you must know that Ahmadinejad is quite popular and is uh, quite loved and loves everyone equally. Mr. Iran Mr. is President. loved and Iran loves everyone equally. Mr. President, Most people are on the side of Iran. Uh, there are more fundamental issues to be discussed, perhaps. But, but uh, Iran is not... Uh, but it's become repetitive, sir. For seven I years I've been answering this, this you, for you. But and every time you answer it in a way which mm. raises more doubts. The problem that the people have is that you talk about elimination, you talk about wiping off. Now, how do you uh, do you pre how do you pretend to speak on behalf of the people? It raises doubts and it stirs doubts in whom people have given you their vote of confidence in order to represent their all-encompassing view. You are representing a media outlet and representing their views. Let's go to the streets of New York tonight, right now. Mr. And President, let's interview the people and find out what they say. Let's find out what the people truly say. Mr. President, you are... Un you what do the people have to do but with you, this? You, your country is... Un you say Iran is These are is fabricated. Loved, but Iran is under the most crippling sanctions of any country in the world right now. You are being sanctioned. You are isolated. Your GDP is shrinking by by some accounts, your, your currency we know has dropped 50 percent. So what I'm trying to explain to you is the reason you have this international pressure, these sanctions, is in part because people doubt Iran's intentions. No, I'd like to ask you, first of all, sir, not to speak on behalf of nations and the people. Were the people who put us under sanctions or a handful of Western governments, which people brought us under sanctions. Many of the European companies are currently, as we speak, conducting trade with us. Some of them do it in hiding, but they do, secretly, but they do conduct that trade. Uh, you hear some news and you believe that Iran's economy is now in chaos. It is not so. It is not so, let me reassure you. We, we came from being the 22nd ranked economy in the world to being the 17th largest. And as we speak, these, uh, the growth of capital and investment continues. Of course, we're not fans of sanctions. But if anyone thinks that sanctions will bring Iran to her knees, they are certainly mistaken. We have learned to live under these circumstances. We don't like to live like this. But at the end of the day, a handful of uh, European countries and the United States, of course, would like to have relations with them. It would benefit both sides. But without them, we have learned to live quite well. We have been living quite well. We have trade relations with over 180 countries throughout the world. America and her allies do not represent the entire world except this. Let's uh, come out of some of these thick shells and change our views and update our views of the world. The time of oppression is gone. The so let me, uh, let me ask you a final question, Mr. President. You've been to New York many, many times, much more than any president of Iran. Uh, your predecessor, Mr. Khatmi, came twice. I his predecessor, Mr. Rafsanjani, I don't believe ever came. So you obviously like New York. Are you going to miss coming to New York? Keep in mind, sir, we didn't come to New York. We came to the UN General Assembly, which happens to be in New York City. And during these few days that I come, either I'm inside the UN General Assembly building or inside the hotel. I haven't gone anywhere else. It's a good city. It has great people. And there are good people everywhere. Okay, let me ask you one more. But allow me, in, out of respect for you and through your camera, to express my gratitude to the people of New York. Would you allow me? When we come, uh, we travel down the street to go to the United Nations building and come back. We see limitations imposed on other vehicles, on pedestrians. Uh, so it creates disturbances for people. And of course, we're never happy uh, to see such disturbances. But of course, the police and the security forces to whom I'm very grateful, worked extremely hard. But the people of New York were very patient. Uh, and if we caused any serious disruption and disturbances, I would like to hereby extend my sincerest apologies to them and thank them for their kindness. Mr. President, pleasure to have you on. God bless you and may you have health and success.
It was a fascinating conversation as ever. President Ahmadinejad seemed to recognize that he had caused perhaps too much controversy with some of his earlier remarks this week and was more careful to be less incendiary. But he was passionate in his attacks on American foreign policy and defined as ever about Iran's response to any military action. In preparing for the interview, I was struck by the conversation going on within Iran. The head of Iran's Expediency Council, a senior political figure, gave an interview in which he said that after the next election in Iran, Iran would move from radicalism to rationality. Ali Larijani, another powerful politician and potentially a presidential candidate, said that the country would move from fundamentalism to moderation. We'll have to watch to see if that's true. Up next, what do you think the folks at Bain Capital think of all the attack ads against them and what do they think of their founders' presidential chances? We'll ask one of the men who runs that company, Steve Pagliuca.